Right, so as you probably noticed, I'm living in my van since I came back to France. Um, so I'm more mobile and I don't have to pay rent, which is really good. But, um, so the van was already um, equipped, already um, designed the interior when I got it. And there's a few stuff that I don't quite uh, agree with. It could be more practical inside. So yeah, that's the plan. Right, so that was the easy part. Now my plan is to remove the current bed that was like this, put the other one that opens uh, like this, so I can have a, um, a sofa a seat like this, put a table here and open the bed to sleep. That's the plan. Let's see now how I make it happen. Right, so for the past few days I've been working on the boat, doing the last few touches to make sure that the boat was ready to pass the safety uh, assessment at the beginning of the race. It's quite a thorough check of, you know, all the safety equipment we uh, need to have on board, which is mandatory and it goes down to all really like small things, but you know, have a certain amount of, uh, to of um, uh, torches, of lamps, um, you know, just measuring, make sure that the chain is long enough, make sure that all your sails are marked properly, etc, etc, etc. There's like eight pages of small details like this. So, quite confident on this, that this is good now. And now I'm, I'm on my way to meet with uh, Judith, who's also doing the, the race, and uh, she's in the training center in, uh, in La Turval. Um, with me. We're going to uh, work and do the passage plan and it's even uh, a bit more than uh, than the passage plan, it's uh, it's more the strategy. So we know the course uh, of the, the three races for the for this race, for the SAS, uh, but we need to figure out properly, well, we start to have an idea of the weather a little bit, but it's mostly um, just knowing where we uh, go, we're going to pass if the wind is north, where we're going to pass if the wind is south, uh, where, you know, what the currents are going to do uh, more or less at the time we're going to go through this. So let's basically try to make uh, a road book uh, to, to make the, the sail as efficient as possible because all the time you go below to check your charts and check your currents and all this, it's time that you don't spend um, trimming your sails so if you do most of the work you know 90% of the work before uh, the start of the race uh, it's, it's it just gives you an advantage uh, they're, they're quite short races these first races so the more detail you, you get the, the, the better and, and then we'll we'll make we'll tune things up at the last moment depending on the weather Right, so still in the prep of the boat and of the race mostly, um, I'm on the mini class, we're not allowed to have a chart plotter, meaning, you know, a screen where you have your chart and your little boat moving onto this. We are allowed to have uh, paper charts and we are allowed to have a GPS which gives us uh, our position 
and also this GPS is allowed to have uh, waypoints. So now what I'm doing is that I'm setting waypoints uh, across the course, uh, places I think I'm going to go uh, through and uh, kind of uh, I'm creating different routes depending on the options and of the wind uh, we're forecasting for now. Um, so I can easily switch in between uh, in between different routes and it make more sense. Uh, I mean, it's quicker while racing to just go in between these options and uh, and yeah, to in order to spend less time below and uh, and maximize the time outside and uh, and trimming sails and and making the boat go fast. So the more work I do now, the less work I have to do after. So yeah, setting these, using the charts to set up my uh, waypoints, and yeah, it's pretty, it's uh, tedious work, but um, hopefully it will pay. So let's see. So I was missing some uh, equipment, mostly safety equipment for the upcoming race, and I just got the the mail delivered. So that's that's great, perfect timing, really. Um, let's see what I got in there. I don't remember what I ordered. A dry bag. Put all my rescue stuff. Life jacket, because we need to have two on board. I only had one. A compass. Some buckets. Ooh, that's a Epir, um, AIS beacon. So I have it in my life jacket. If I fall overboard, this sends a message. AIS. Safety uh, tethers. Knife. Ooh, sextant. Food for the safety food for the grab bag next to the life raft. That's a PLB, that's another beacon, but it doesn't send AI signal, it sends a GPS signal emergency worldwide. So if I fall in the middle of the Atlantic, that's what gets me. And bearing compass to do my navigation. Right, so for the past few days uh, I've been working on the boat, I've been working on admin, looking for money. I also went to uh, do my Yacht Master Ocean, uh, the final exam, the RL, and I got it. So that's super cool. And now back on the boat. That's it, I'm off from La Turbal going to Les Sables d'Olonne for my first race. And uh, the delivery should be pretty nice, there's some good wind. Uh, I was hoping to uh, to have sun as well, but it doesn't look like it's gonna be the case. I'm entering Les Sables d'Olonne at the moment and it's such a it's such a legendary place because it's where Le, Le Vendée Globe starts from and, uh, and yeah I've only seen this place I mean entered this place on pictures you know on, on, on movies when the Vendée Globe leaves and comes back first time I I entered this harbor myself so it's pretty nice um, yeah 
nice, nice sail today, and um, tomorrow start prepping the boat. It's gonna be nice. There's 72 minis in there. It'll be fun.